I've been getting a lot of questions on TypeScript and how to use it with Vue 3. So today I'm going to show you an example of several different ways of using types in Vue 3. And hopefully you guys can use this on your next project if you aren't already. The first thing I want to talk about is showing props with types. For these examples, we're all going to use the script setup, lang equals ts for TypeScript. So the first thing we're going to look at is props with types. So the most simplest way of working with props and adding types to them is to use this define props. And you just put in between the angle brackets, this generic, the type. In this case, we'll put in message equals colon string. Now, if we look at the bottom of this, you can see here I have this message already here. And if I save it, you see parent sent from Eric. So if I look in app.view, I'm just passing in this generic comp and I'm passing in this message Eric. And by the way, uh, I am binding it here, but if I didn't want to bind it, I can just have it here as a string literal as well, and it continues to work. Now, the second way you can do this is you can set a value here for props equals define props. One thing to keep in mind, I see sometimes beginner developers do this, and I sometimes do this too. You think that you have to define or have this assignment operator for props to equal define props. It'll actually work either way. I can actually go like this. I can do props.message, and that'll be the exact same thing. So I can either had props.message or just message and it works fine. Also, one more thing with define props real quickly is this is not imported in anywhere. This is a macro. So make sure you don't try to import define props in. It's just, it's available in your skip setup. There is a new experimental feature that was just released for Vue 3.3, which allows you to do this way of adding in and destructuring props. And this is really popular in the React ecosystem. So if you're used to destructuring your props, you can do it this way. You can also do assignment operators. It, one thing you have to do if you are gonna use this, you have to go into your Vite config and you have to add in this new define uh, props destructure equals true under script and you have to pass in a view, otherwise it won't work. So typically when you use define props, you're not supposed to do any sort of destruction because you can re lose reactivity. But this is a way to get around that, which is a really cool feature that they just added. Uh, one other thing, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, if you have message like this, uh, this means it is a required prop. Uh, so if you don't have it required, you can put this question mark here and that'll make it so it's not required. If I go back in to my app view, and let's say I just delete it out. You can see it changed to hello because that is what's defaulted in there. But for now, I'll pass in Eric. And there's another way of doing this to without using experimental mode if you want to have default values, which we'll talk about soon. One really obvious thing that happens with, with new developers of Vue is they kind of get confused and they think they can do both at the same time. So if you don't have, if you try to do something like this where you're defining the prop type, so in this case, you're defining props, you're selecting both type and argument at the same time, you can't do both. So don't do this, it'll always give you this error, which kind of leads me to another way of handling props, which I wanna cover. I covered this in my view 3.3 video, if you've already missed it, but you can now do generics. So if I come back over here and I add in generic t extend string, and I can add it here, and then I'm going to import in types and import in define props. And so what this is saying is now with, this is another new feature of Vue 3.3, you can import in types from external files and you can now pass it in types like this. So this generic comp is coming from here. It's just a message with type T and it works uh, as you expect it. And I could have uh, this message obviously works, but if I try to bind a number to it, it still gives you it still actually works, but it will give you an error that number is not assigned to type string. So let's take a look at type objects. So this is another way we can assign a type. And you may have seen this if you've seen something called define component. A uh, define component is another way of creating your view application instead of using script setup. It's really used for TypeScript. But once again, I think script setup's a little bit better unless maybe you're like a library author. So this type script, this type uh, objects here so you can add import in prop type and then when you define your props instead of using the angle brackets with generics you can just 
uh, assign it as an object, and then you can do this prop type and then pass in the prop. So this will work too, uh, and it works fine. Uh, I, I would say, I believe this is a little easier for me to understand than this, uh, but this is also a great option if you're, option if you're using the options API, because then you can also use this type of syntax there as well. So this is another way to declare your types. We touched on this before, but you can use uh, external files. So in this case, I'm using this generic comp types from the types file. It's just a message string in there. I'm not using any type generics. And I can just pull it in from this generic comp types and then pass it in. So one thing to keep in mind, so right here with this define props, I'm just passing it in. It's gonna have the correct prop, pop, props as I expect. One way to get around this, uh, this is a new view 3.3 feature, is if you really wanted to, you could just have, you can import in a type, and then when you set up your interface, you can set the, uh, you can have this in the local file and then have the type be that type right there. In this case, I set it to book. That's kind of one way to get around it if you're using like an old version of view three and you don't want to, and you can't import types in. So that's pretty handy as well. Now with defaults is sort of the way that that just works that I really prefer to add in default values. So once again, if we have a value that, in this case, we'll put at the question mark, it's not required, then you can set a default value if someone doesn't pass a value in for it. In this case, you just add this with defaults. It, once again, this is a macro, you don't necessarily have to import it in, and then you have, you surround it by defined props. I would say as soon as this experimental feature uh, is done, this one right here, where you can just destructure it out and you can put in a default value, uh, I think this is easier. So once you this is like fully featured in the view three, I would just do it this way instead of using with defaults. But for now, since it's still an experimental feature, I'd be more it'd be more safe to use with defaults because who knows they may take it they may use the experimental feature and change it or take it out of future versions. Now that you can set in types for your emits and your slots. Slots is something brand new with view 3.32. I did that in my previous video, but I'll show you defined emits. Defined emits actually change too. So once again, you just put in the angle brackets and then you can put in the values. So define emits is a way, if you've never used it, which I know some view 3 developers don't, you can emit values from your child back up to the parent. And then you can put in the, the value that you want. The return type's always gonna be void uh, because emits are kind of like fire and forget. You don't necessarily get values back from it. Uh, same thing with this update here. And then there's a new style that came out with view 3.3. I think I actually didn't cover this in the last video, but the way it works is you put a change and an update and you just use this bracket style notation. So each one of the, uh, each one of the props that are in here that you're passing would then be, uh, sent in here. So you would have, maybe if you have another one, you would pass in the other prop here. So for ref reactive and computed, they're all really similar. So I'll go over it. So let's say, let's add a year here. We're just gonna add a year to my, to my uh, template here. And so you can set uh, a year first by using this uppercase type ref. And then you can define what it is. In this case, it's a string or number and year 2020, if you hover over the year, you could see it's a type string or type number. So if I try to put in, I don't know, an object, it would give me an error that this is not assignable. So keep that in mind too. It also infers a lot of things as well. So if I just have const test equals ref five, and I kind of hover over this test right here, it's gonna say it's never declared, but it says it is type number. So you don't necessarily have to define it uh, unless it's some complicated type. So keep in that it infers the type for you, which is really nice. So in this case uh, right here, since I don't have any values in this ref, it's gonna infer it's, it's uh, number or undefined. So keep that in mind. If you ever have undefined values, you'll have to deal with that. Uh, one way I've seen in the past of kind of getting around this is to use this uh, as a known as number. So if I want to if I want to have this to be a number, but for some reason I want to set it as an object on the initial start or maybe null or something else, 
I can cast as unknown and then to number. I know some people don't like this style, but I've in a pinch, I've used it to set default values instead of having, especially if it's a complicated object, maybe I just want it to be an empty object at first. So that's kind of a neat little hack that I've done a few times. So reactive is very similar to ref in the way that it will infer whatever the value is when you define it. So in this case, it's reactive. I can do title, view three guide. If I hover over this, uh, it says book title string. So if I come back here, book dot, I'm getting uh, completion here on that. For computed, you do have, uh, it's very similar to, it, it'll infer what you want, but if you want to, you can also uh, set, set it up with like a generic here. So I'm going to set the return type and you can see here, I have computed here. I'll have to make sure that since I put number in here that it returns a number. If I don't have any return type, it's going to complain that the return type's wrong. This is also, event handlers is really common when you start diving into TypeScript and how you handle it. So kind of the common, most common way is when you create an event handler is you add the type event inside here. And then when you ever use it inside of it, you just cast it as an HTML input so you can get the dot value out of it. And I've done the same thing for keyboard events as well. Let's say you have this key press right here. Then if I type something in this window and I look at my console, you can see it's typing here at the bottom as well. So those are the basics of how to add TypeScript with your Vue 3 application. There's a couple of more things I didn't cover, but if you want to deal with provide and inject, there's an injection key type that you can pull out to add in for your key uh, as well. There's also template refs, which I didn't go over, but it's there's two types of type, kind of refs. You can, you can add this HTML imp, uh, input element to it and it also recommends to set it as null the value of null on initial and then if you do component template refs it's very similar where it'll infer it but you can add instance of and the type of the value this is the case where you're like using refs from a child to a parent uh, or a parent to a child so you can use this instance of to grab the type of of the component to learn more about Vue 3.3 types, make sure you click here to learn all about it.